There's a second study also by a Cornell team that is focused on the uh, greenhouse gas emissions impacts of hydrofracking as well that we're going to be releasing probably again within the next three or four months. We've been doing policymaker uh, education uh, at the State House in Albany, uh, developing databases on accidents and the uh, actual track record of the gas industry in this field. We're doing media work, including uh, flyovers of the uh, fields in Pennsylvania for New Yorkers so they can go down there and see what that stuff looks like. As well as, uh, I'm sure some of you in the room have seen the movie Gasland. We help support the distribution of that film and, and using that as a tool to go from community to community as an organizing effort. If necessary, we certainly uh, haven't pulled the trigger on this one yet. We've also uh, invested some work on uh, legal research around potential legal intervention should it come to that in the state. I think it's realistic uh, that, that we're not going to stop gas drilling, and in case you haven't figured it out by now, we're kind of against it. Um, the, um, uh, we, we do want to get a, a, the strongest and best regulatory mechanism in place for protecting community health and environment. At the federal level, there's still a bit of activity, and you've seen, in fact, even in, in, the, um, in the report that came out, there was a copy of a letter uh, from the Congressional Committee Oversight uh, on this uh, around putting back in place the federal protections, Clean Water Act, Clean Air Act, that used to be in place around hydrofracking that, that were lifted a few years back. And so um, we're, we're trying to uh, tackle this issue at the multiple levels in which it occurs. All told, uh, we've over the last 18 months, we've awarded about $1.2 million in maybe two dozen grants to maybe a dozen and a half different nonprofit organizations to work on the issue. Um, the other side of it is our investment side. Uh, the 95% of the foundation's uh, assets. Uh, as part of a, a broader movement around using one's assets to advance one mission, or mission-related investing, as it's called, this spring we were the lead filer in a shareholder resolution with Exxon Corporation around its acquisition of XTO Gas, which is a big gas exploration uh, drilling company. Uh, that, uh, I, I won't give you the exact word again because I can't remember it anyway, but essentially it had two points to it. One, uh, Exxon needs to be much more sensitive to the environmental and health impacts of this hydrofracking. And it also has to be much more sensitive <coughs> to the shareholder risk implications of hydrofracking. And if you would have doubts about that, all you have to do is track uh, what happened to BP stock after the Gulf oil spill. It represents a significant risk for, for investors. Uh, this was part of a campaign that actually <coughs> utilized a whole range of investors that um, included three or four different intermediary organizations that work on shareholder resolutions. That's our specialty. In our case, we work with a group called As You Sow. They're based out of California. And um, uh, I believe there were 12 different uh, oil and gas companies involved in the campaign. Uh, the results were, were beyond our expectations. Usually a first-time resolution with a corporation around an environmental issue garners about a 5% vote. That's, that's the average. In the Exxon case, we got a 26% vote. And as I believe is mentioned in, in Ben's report, uh, the highest vote was uh, Williams uh, Gas, and uh, that was 46% voted yes, uh, which was absolutely phenomenal. Now this is going to be an ongoing effort. Part of the process of shareholder resolutions is that you go back, you go back. And uh, so, uh, while we, we may be uh, David to a Goliath, we, we will be persistent in this effort.